So thank you very much. I would like to share some thought with you about uh, sharing in companies. And uh, the title is uh, something I believe in, but also a sort of provocation, because we should agree also on this fact. Sharing is beautiful, isn't it? Are we sure? Why? When? Uh, and as we discussed this morning, sharing is nice, it's important, because by sharing we learn and we increase our knowledge, not just because we add. You know, it's, just a, it's not just a matter of adding things to a sort of a, you know, backpack or warehouse in which we store all, all the things we know, but because really by combining information, mixing them, reuse them, exploit them, we are able really to know more, to increase our knowledge and our comprehension of the processes of the world we live in. Uh, but uh, what, do I, what does it mean, sharing or share information and data when we talk about companies? Is this something that is meaningful? Because uh, uh, what is the purpose for them of sharing? In, in a company, usually sharing is something which is counterintuitive. If we share, we lose something. We are basically giving away something. So uh, they are, on the other side, there could be someone stalling your data, your information, your assets, your value. So sharing is something that is considered by many counterintuitive. Uh, and the business model of many companies is based on the notion of protecting knowledge, you know, keep it secret, or you know, exactly the opposite of sharing. So what does it mean? And um, instead of discussing this in theory, even if I, I am an academician, I, I prefer to show you an example, something we have been working in and uh, by showing an example, I will try then uh, to draw some conclusion, lessons, or you know, insights uh, uh, at the end of this talk. So the example I want to show you is uh, an environment we have created for Expo 2015. It's a digital ecosystem. I'm going to show you and tell you what it is in a few seconds. That is supposed to help companies sharing information and services. And uh, uh, I will try to illustrate in a few slides what it is, just to give you an idea, and then I will try to comment on its nature and its purpose. So first, if you want some information, you can go to the Expo 2015 website and, uh, well, don't, don't ask me about the graphics, but, you know, on the upper left corner there is an icon that you can click and then you get access to the full site describing this project and environment. Um, so what, what, wh where does it come from? What is the origin of this project? The origin is very simple. A few years ago when uh, uh, Milano won the competition for uh, uh, Austin uh, Expo, uh, there was a basic problem, the simple problem. What do we do for the visitor of Expo? What do we organize? How do we support uh, the organization of an event uh, during the, uh, that will probably attract millions of people? And uh, of course, if you want to attract people, you, will, you should help them visit the location, uh, not just the event or the exhibition, but also the town, the country, the region, uh, with all the different uh, uh, services that are needed to do so. So transportation, accommodation, uh, culture, entertainment, uh, uh, food. Uh, how do we help them exploit and enjoy Lombardy, Milano, Italy, by providing them advanced tool to using the internet to know what is going around, uh, exploit all the beauties and uh, assets of our territory. And basically the idea was, uh, well, we should create a new generation of digital services. Uh, we should uh, leave the notion of uh, individual silos, uh, uh, individual services and uh, systems that we have nowadays on the internet and from a technical viewpoint, if there are people, technical people here, you know what it means. It means to create application mashup, combination of information from different sources in order to provide something that is more interesting, useful, or uh, coherent, uh, and organized for uh, the visitor. When I visit a location, I want to organize my trip, know where to stay, 
and uh, enjoy culture, the events that are going on, know the state of the traffic and transportation. Of course, there are things that already do this kind of uh, services, offer this kind of services, but they are based on a, not on the notion of sharing. You have huge websites where the, you copy information, they collect the information, and then they offer you their vision of that information. We wanted to do something different. And so we create, a, well, this is a, a, a bit of a complicated slide, but I will try to make it short. We create something that enables application mashup, so combination of different sources of information in order to allow anybody to create a new generation of applications. So it's a marketplace of web services from a technical viewpoint. The idea is very simple. There are two categories of users in this environment. The providers of information and services and the exploiters of these information services, application developers, website developers. It's an open environment, so anybody can provide information and services, and anybody can develop application. It's not a single source or you know, a restricted environment. Anybody can join this uh, endeavor. And the, find the ultimate goal is to enable application developers to exploit all the services available in the environment. There are very simple infrastructure, there is a very simple infrastructure there, just some directories and uh, uh, services to enable the matching between uh, front end and back end. And most important, there are rules, standards, processes that enable this cooperation. So, don't, let, let's uh, go ahead and see some examples. Let's say you want to join this ecosystem. It's very easy. You go to the website, you fill up a form, and you're in. It's free, available for anybody. The important thing is that you share the standards, the processes, the procedures that are defined by the ecosystem. Once you have joined, you can publish services, so bricks that you can use to create application. There is a website where you can see all the different ser services that are available, test them, and if you are an application developer and you want to, uh, you, you decide that, that service is useful, you can download the descriptor and that allows you to build the application that exploited that service. So there are a number of services already available. And uh, by using them, you can basically create an application. So an application that is able to exploit different sources, combine the information you derive, and create a new kind of new generation of applications. Can, let's see some examples. I want to skip this in order to save some time. So when you arrive in Linate Malpensa, now, in the arrival lounge, you will see these monitors. Uh, two, day, two or three days ago, they were also installed in uh, Bergamo, at the Oriol Serio Airport. Now, this is a, an application developed by the airport operator, uh, SEA. So it's a private, comp public, private, I don't know. It's a company that uh, developed this application by exploiting the information provided by Autostrade per l'Italia, the railway system, the uh, Autostrade Serravalle, ATM, which is the public transportation of Milano, and this is done by directly interacting with the information system of this company and in real time extracting or interacting with the company to exchange information and services. In this case, it is just a request of information, but being that a service, it can be anything, a transaction, a reservation, whatever you want. So it's a bi-directional interaction between the application, in this case of SEA, and the application of the information system of those other companies. Um, I don't think there is any, anything like this, at least I've not seen it in any other airport in Europe. Well, this is the uh, Malpensa Express. This is the train connecting Milano to Malpensa. This is run by the company in charge of the transportation, railway transportation in Lombardy. 
and by using the E015, the environment, they are able to extract in real time the information about, well, if I'm going to Malpensa, I want to see the status of check-ins and arrivals. If I'm going to Milano, I want to see the state of the bus stop around the railway station. And this is done by interacting with different companies through the platform, through the ecosystem. Um, this is a, a totem that you can find in Piazza San Babila in Milano or in, Piazza, in other places, in other squares in Milano. And basically, this is operated by ATM. ATM is not the uh, automatic teller machine, unfortunately. In Milano, we have two, two problems. The, airway, the airport operator is called SEA, S-E-A. And the uh, local transportation is ATM. So on all of this display, there is C and ATM that do not mean, uh, of course, uh, uh, Mare and uh, telling machine. So ATM is the, transport, the Auto Transportation Authority. And they offer in real time the state of all the transportation means around Milano and within Milano. Well, these are, let me show you the website. It's easier. Ah. This is the website. Where, where are this is web, the website of Autostrade per l'Italia. So it's the operator of the highway system, one of the largest operator of highway system in Italy. And of course, they have the state, the, the status of the different uh, highways uh, segments. And you can see the colors indicating the state of the, the level of congestion of the highway. But then, uh, well, let me show you something here. Well, this is. Uh, the Sheffield building where I work, and just uh, in the square in front of the Sheffield building, there is a bike me station where you can rent a bike. This is operator, operated by the local transportation authority. Well, there are 18 uh, bicycles available right now. So in this, in this price, uh, you, you see the time there, 130602. So the website of Autostrade per l'Italia uh, made a query right in real time to the website, uh, to the information system of uh, ATM, and in real time they got the information about the status of that uh, bike me station. This is possible because uh, we have enabled the sharing of in real time, not just of you know, data, but their true interaction between the two information systems. So it's the sharing of processes and services, which is much more than simply exchanging data. So. Oh, by the way, you can find all well, these, these applications are available both as a web app or as a, you know, Android, iOS, and these kind of things. By the way, this is the result of an experimentation phase that lasted a few weeks. I'm, tell you, I'm telling this especially to my Italian uh, uh, friends and fellow. We are used to you know, decades of work in order to create uh, things. These applications were created using uh, uh, um, 10, 20, 30, keys, uh, 20,000 euros in a few weeks. It was not you know, a million euro project or something like that. So, and by the way, we are now extending the ecosystem with information. For instance, uh, Regione Lombardia is exposing all the information about the uh, cultural uh, heritage and the, you know, the monuments in the area, um, all the restaurants. So, of course, it's an ecosystem. And as the internet has taught us, well, there are network, uh, network effects. So the more information we add, the more attractive it is for uh, developers. So what, is the, what, what did I learn from this experience? What is the, the real key concept that is driving this experience? In my opinion, is that word there, competition, which is a very strange word, especially for Italians, in my opinion. This is... We should uh, learn to love this word. What does it mean, competition? 
when it is possible to do something really great, not just good, great. When we operate at two different levels, the first level is cooperation. And cooperation is needed in order to define a richer level playing field. So an environment in which there are several rules that uh, are shared, agreed upon, and used in order to compete. So create innovative application and uh, initiatives that do compete ag against each other, but on the basis of a, of a shared concept, ideas, principles, and technology also. Well, this idea, in my opinion, is wonderful because it combines the need for something upon which we uh, have to build uh, and cooperate all together with the right of compete and express our ability and the individual uh, intelligence uh, uh, as individuals, as companies, as uh, communities. And, uh, well, there is nothing new in this. What we did, uh, when I think about the, this project, which is a simple project, I, think, but I didn't invent absolutely nothing. There are other examples. Of course there are. There is one example called the internet. The internet is a huge, humongous example of a system which is built on the notion of competition. The Internet Engineering Task Force defined a huge number of standards. Why we can send an email and on the other side there is someone receiving it? Because we have SMTP, which is the standard to exchange emails. And it doesn't care if you have Outlook and the other guys has Gmail. You can exchange emails. Why we can open a, a website, almost, almost, using any, web, any browser? because we have HTTP and HTML. Why we can make a transaction? Because there is SSL. So there are a huge number of standards that we all agreed upon and that we all use in order to create different browsers, different websites, competing applications, competing, app, competing apps. But we have a common ground upon which we work and upon, and that we use to live and create a, a shared environment for our operation. And the internet is based on this concept. Its ability to enforce standards and to enable creativity and independence of operation is the reason why the internet it is what it is. Let me show you another example, GSM. Well, this looks like an Apple store, but usually there are many, many you know, devices, uh, many companies, many operators, uh, but we all are able all to make phone calls, and on the other side, there is some, some, someone else replying to our calls. Why? Because we have the same architecture, the same standards that has been adopted by everybody, Samsung, Apple, LG, Nokia, whoever you want, Telecom, Vodafone, Tree, Wind, they all use the same standards in order to provide competing applications and services. That compete, but cooperate. And I think this is a real, the key lessons that I, I can draw from my experience. And I think this is something as companies, not just as volunteers or you know, researchers, as companies we should learn and exploit. By, co by applying competition, by defining our common ground of operation and compete on top of it, we are really able to en enhance and increase the level of the services of the application we develop, er, develop and ultimately to provide a better service to our community and to our uh, friends and fellow citizens. So the importance of sharing is not just because we are able to share some raw data. Sharing is critical and important when we are able to share and uh, adopt visions. In A015 is based on a vision. 
there are multiple actors cooperating in order to provide services, not just one, not just Google or, any, or someone else. Anybody can do it. Common standards, common models, common processes. So there is a huge role for governance, for a common vision that must be uh, ensured if we want to really apply this vision and therefore and consequently provide a better uh, solution to the many problems we have in our daily life. So I think this is the, the, the important thing that I learned from the experience and I think it's something that is not easy to appreciate uh, from a business viewpoint because too often we believe that you know creating barriers, protecting the, our own environments and business settings uh, is uh, the right way to go in order to ensure competitiveness of our companies, of the future of our companies. That's not true. Or it must be done in a clever way. There are things that must be, must be protected or uh, you know, exploited, others that, that must be shared and uh, agreed upon with the rest of the community, business community, and not, just, and not only business. So my impression is that really this is a, a great opportunity for companies that in the first place. And uh, State of the Net should be an opportunity really to promote not just you know, the individual initiative that uh, everybody or anybody can pro uh, run or uh, carry out in its own uh, daily activity. It's really an opportunity, in my opinion, to reinforce principles, ideas, uh, visions that can be useful to uh, support uh, really some discontinuity in the way we do our work as a citizen, as companies, and I think also as a nation as a whole. Thank you very much.